For millennia, well-intentioned people have been trying to achieve peace and justice through the political process, trying to vote their way to utopia, hoping that if only we had the right form of government, the right set of laws, the right checks and balances, the right people in charge, that society could be what it should be. But to one degree or another, the end result of politics has always been a ruling elite made rich and powerful at the expense of the prosperity and freedom of the people. Tyrants do not create their own power out of thin air. They trick the people into giving it to them. As long as people continue to make the same assumptions, fall for the same deceptions, keep playing the same games, and keep looking for a political solution, they will get the same results. But when people stop falling for the tricks, stop fueling oppression with their money and their obedience, then, and only then, will the cycle of tyranny and oppression end. Taxes are the price we pay for a civilized society. But if being civilized means to coexist peacefully, interacting through voluntary means instead of by violence, then taxation, one group of people forcibly depriving another of the fruits of their labor, is the exact opposite of being civilized. To steal the money that someone has earned through voluntary means is to steal that person's productivity, his time and his effort, to steal a part of his life. And to steal a part of someone's life is called slavery. Taxes are often characterized as the people simply paying for the services they receive from government. But this is a gross mischaracterization. Imagine getting a bill from a private business for services you never asked for and may not even have wanted. And imagine that if you don't pay whatever price the business decides, they will wipe out your bank account, seize your assets, and possibly put you in a cage. In any context other than government, such behavior would of course be seen as immoral, unjust, and criminal. And yet we're told that when government does the same thing, it is legitimate, moral, and necessary for society. There are two sides to the immorality of taxation. First, it deprives the productive people of a large part of the wealth they produce, stealing their buying power, reducing their ability to provide for themselves and their families, and making them less able to support the things they care about. Second, it forces people to fund and support things which go against their wishes, that conflict with their own values and priorities, and that are contrary to their own interests. Government does not produce any wealth. Everything it spends, it must first take from the productive people, whether through open taxation or the hidden tax known as inflation. As a result, it is always the productive, law-abiding taxpayers who foot the bill for tyranny. It was not Mao, Stalin, or Hitler who funded or manufactured the guns, tanks, and bombs that terrorized and murdered so many millions. It was the good people of China, Russia, and Germany who felt obligated to hand over the fruits of their labor to those wearing the mantle of authority. Likewise, all the government bureaucrats, the abusive law enforcers, the corrupt politicians, their buildings, their vehicles, their computers, their utilities, their salaries, we are the ones paying for all of that. And perhaps most ironically, when it comes to the IRS and all of their tax collectors, we are the ones paying them to rob us. Everything of value in the world has come from the efforts of productive people, while the political class can only steal and destroy. In short, the good have always funded the evil, and that will continue to be the case as long as the good people imagine a moral obligation to surrender a portion of what they earned by way of taxes to those who claim the right to rule. Taxes are not the price we pay for civilized society. Taxes are how civilized society pays for its own destruction. Taxation is no different than a mafia protection racket, where a gang claims to be protecting you, while that same gang threatens to hurt you if you don't pay up. Yes, the gang may sometimes go after other thieves and aggressors, but if you don't pay their protection fees, you know that they are the ones who will be at your door next. Some argue that because taxes pay for roads, defense, protection, and helping the poor, ending taxes would therefore mean no roads, no defense, no protection, and no help for the poor. In any context other than politics, such an argument would be immediately recognized as completely invalid. It would be akin to a common criminal stealing $100 from you, handing you a sandwich, and then arguing that you should thank him for having robbed you because otherwise you would have starved. Would you like it if you could choose for yourself which government programs, if any, you were going to pay for? Yes. Yeah. Say yes, mm -hmm. definitely. Oh uh, yeah, we'll love that. 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think, you know, idealistically, yes, but I don't think, again, it's a matter of things actually working. Sure. And that it, you can't pick and choose. Okay. Absolutely. Yes. If any. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Okay. I'd like to know where my money is going. Yeah, absolutely. If they're taking my money and using it for programs, I would like to know exactly where my money's going. No, that's not how it works. Just because I don't agree with something doesn't mean it shouldn't be covered or paid for. This is how this country runs. If we don't like the process, then we have to change the process. But the way it is now, this is how it is. Politicians constantly raise tax rates and impose new taxes against the wishes of the people and constantly spend the confiscated wealth on things a lot of people don't want, such as corporate bailouts, a massive welfare state, and perpetual warmongering. If the money was only used for services people wanted to purchase and things people thought were good for society, there would be no need for an IRS. No need for those in power to back up their demands with the threat of fining or prosecuting anyone who doesn't pay up. They may pretend to be serving and representing you, but the politician's true attitude is obvious. They don't care what you want, and they believe that they have more of a right to decide how your money is spent than you do. Those in power and in the mainstream media speak of taxation as the way people pay their fair share of the costs of society. The bizarre implication is that if money first passes through the hands of politicians and bureaucrats, it's good for the country and society, but if it doesn't, it's not. This implies that the people being forced to fund Ponzi schemes, government waste and corruption, and programs and agendas many people don't even approve of, somehow serves the common good, but that the people voluntarily donating, spending, or investing their own money on what they think is important is somehow selfish and destructive to society. Most of the victims of the government extortion racket have fallen for this rhetoric, and as a result, believe it's necessary, legitimate, and good for a ruling class to forcibly extort all of the productive people. If you try to avoid paying tribute to the politicians, your so-called fair share of taxes, if you try to prevent yourself from being robbed to fund things you oppose, your neighbors would likely view you as the criminal and view those who would attack you as noble law enforcers. It would be like someone getting his car stolen and instead of being angry at the thief, being angry at his neighbors who didn't get their car stolen. By portraying mass robbery as the people paying their fair share of the costs of society, thieves who have legalized their thievery can convince their victims to be proud of having been robbed and to resent anyone who wasn't robbed. This is just one more example of how politicians use the tactic of divide and conquer to keep the people at war with each other so they don't identify the real root of the problem, which is those who seek to rule over others. There is a simple question which demonstrates whether someone has fallen for this trick or not. Would you take this deal? You never have to pay any kind of tax, income tax, property tax, sales tax, etc. But you're not allowed to vote for anyone else to be taxed either. I think that makes. I think that would. Oh. <laughs> I mean, I if it if it's like in the uh, like a very general sense, then uh, yeah, I would agree to that. Yeah. Yep. Sure would. I don't yeah. think we should be taxed. No. I agree. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely not. Okay. So you would not take that deal? No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's okay. There is nothing greedy or immoral about wanting to decide where your money goes. Nor is there anything noble or virtuous about handing your earnings over to politicians. In fact, refusing to fund immoral and destructive agendas is righteous and justified and does serve humanity and society as a whole, even if the thieves portray such actions as criminal. In contrast, it has always been the obedient, law-abiding taxpayers who have funded every government oppression in history, and that is nothing to be proud of.